What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of Scatter, Scatter 5, which is currently in beta, so you can download it for free. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download the newest version of the beta by going to this link in the notes in the videos down below. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to download this version of the add-on. So a couple things about this. First off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've downloaded the newest version of Blender, which currently is 2.93, so that all the features are gonna work the way that they're supposed to. Then you're also gonna to wanna to make sure to add on, or download not only the add-on, but also the scatter pack as well, because that's gonna be important. That contains the information on how things are going to be scattered. So there's other information in here as well, as well as there is a Blender artist topic, which you can go into and ask any questions you have or report any issues or anything like that. And so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you get this installed and enabled. And inside of this, and so you also wanna make sure that you go into your preferences manager and under preferences, there's an option here for install a scatter package. That's what you wanna click on and make sure that you've downloaded that scatter pack as well so that your options over here start showing up. You can manage all of that in here as well. But then once you do that, what this is gonna do is this is gonna pop up a window over here on the right hand side. So you can tap the N key in order to bring this up. And it's gonna give you options that look a lot like the scatter that we already have in the uh, released version. So it's kind of nice if you're familiar with that, then this isn't gonna be that different for you. But what we're gonna do, is this is basically going to give us options for scattering different things on objects. And so the first thing you wanna do when you do this is you wanna select an object to scatter along, which is going to be the emitter. So in this case, for example, we wanna click on the little eyedropper, we wanna click on this plane right here. And one thing that's probably important about your plane is make sure that you've gone in here and you've subdivided it a couple times so that there's different vertices in here. But now that we've done this, what we need to do is we need to click in this little window right here, which is gonna allow us to set how things are scattered. So you can see how you get kind of a visual preview of the way things are scattered right here. So these are what are contained inside of that scatter pack, which is why you need to make sure that you install that. And so there's kind of presets in here for the way things get scattered. There's also an option in here we'll look at in a bit for manual distribution. So that is the new functionality for placing things manually rather than using one of these presets. But for now, we're just gonna pick a simple preset. I think we'll probably just pick, let's go with this demo three for right now. So now we have a scatter operator set up. What we need to do is we need to add an object for that. So the way that we can do that is we can just come in here and we can click on an object right here. Notice how this gives us the option for scatter selected. So when you click on the button for scatter selected, what that's gonna do is that's gonna scatter these on these, this surface. One thing I've noticed is sometimes when it brings these in, and I don't know if this is on purpose or not, um, these do come in where they don't show up in your viewport. So if you wanna see them in your viewport, you can just go down to your particle systems list and click on this button right here. And so notice how what that did is that's basically come in here and that has um, scattered this cube randomly along the surface. And so when you first set this up, you can adjust the number of particles in here per meter. Um, if you do want to adjust them after you've created it, you just need to scroll down to your particle distribution settings down below. But that's allowed us to scatter this along this surface. So let's say we wanted to add another object on this surface. We just click in here and click in the button for scatter selected. That's gonna add this in here as well. And again, I'm just gonna turn that on. But notice how you're getting some random rotation in here, other things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color the surface just so we can see a little bit better. So we'll just color this maybe like a darker green. Like this. All right, so now let's say you have these in here and you want to adjust them. So first off, notice how down below there's, there's a particle systems list. So it's under the 
tweaking settings down below. If you open that up, that particle settings list is going to allow you to, to open up the different systems that are in here and adjust them. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add more cubes. Well, I could just click on this, and then down below, notice how there's options in here for particle distribution, rotation, and scale that you can use to adjust things like the number of particles that are being created in here. So you can adjust how many there are by adjusting the particles per square meter. Um, you can adjust the seed, which is going to adjust just the randomization in here. Um, there's other options in here as well, like limiting the distance between each of them, other things like that. I'm not going to mess with those too much for right now. Then there's also options down here where you can set the scale and rotation randomization as well. I can set this so that this has a maximum random rotation of 360 degrees like this, that's just going to give you some fine control over this. You can do the same thing with the scale down below where you can set this to one and then you can set this so that these have a random scale of a certain size or a minimum maximum size in here as well. So let's say that you wanted to delete one or two of these systems. So let's say for example that we didn't want random polygons in here. What you could do is you could come in here and you could just click on this and click on the little trash can right here to remove the particle system like this. And so a few things I'll note about this before we go any further. So at the moment, I don't believe the biomes are quite up and running yet. So if you click on biomes right here, it's gonna take you to your uh, library, but there's nothing really in here. So there's an option here to click on this to open the Blender Artist thread. But at the moment, I don't think there's anything that's actually been created. I think that's something that's gonna come a little bit later. So note that this is in beta and it's not 100% ready to go. So there's also some settings you can adjust. So for example, this option right here is actually where you can set if your particle system is hidden or not when you first create this. So right now, when you create a particle system, it is hiding them by default. If you don't like that, you can turn that off. You can also set this to have a viewport density reduction, meaning let's say, for example, that we were to scatter this on here and there were a bunch of them, right? So let's say there were just a ton of these right here. Well, you could set this so that when you create something with a higher level of particles, that only some of them are shown. So I could set this to have a viewport density of 50, so it would only show half of these. And really probably the best way to demo that would be to enter this up here. But let's say I wanted 50 particles per square meter. This is gonna show these with half of those objects shown. And you can adjust that down in your particle display settings down here. So notice if I turn this up, or down, I can set how many of these are shown in my viewport, even though I've got more of them in my actual system. And so there's other options down here as well, which I don't wanna to get too far into right now. What I wanna do is I do want to look at the manual scattering. Um, so first off, let's say that we were to add some trees to the surface right here. And so when I place my trees, I wanna set these as, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the simple random when I scatter these, that's just gonna randomly scatter these. So I've got my different trees in here, but so let's say we don't want this intersecting with these big objects right here. Well, you can go down into your parametric vertex groups and you can just click on the plus button and you can do a V group paint. What that's gonna allow you to do is that's gonna allow you to quickly paint in here like this. So what you can do is you can paint this out and basically what you're doing is you're setting a vertex group. So we could do the same thing over here where we're just gonna paint this out. And then once we've done that, and I'm not sure why this is in your particle scale, but you can go into your vertex group mask and you can select that. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this so that those objects aren't gonna show up inside of that vertex group. So you can see I can paint this out so it's not gonna scatter objects in the red area. So if you do wanna keep things from being scattered in a certain area, you can use this function in order to do that. All right, so in addition to having these kind of procedural scattering options, there's also an option in here 
you click on the end for a manual distribution. And so this is kind of a newer workflow that's contained in here that gives you a lot more control over the way things are scattered. And so the way that works is first off, you'd set your emitter like this one. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spread this little, uh, this little uh, sapling on top of this model right here. But we've set our emitter. We wanna set this to manual distribution. And then we can just select that object and click on scatter selected. Well, in this case, you're not gonna see anything show up in here when you first do that, right? So there's nothing really shown, but what you need to do, is so you need to scroll down and you can see how for particle distribution, there's some tools in here. Well, if you click on one of these tools, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you into this mode where you can place objects. And so notice how you've got a number of different brushes in here that you can use. So first off, there's the dot brush, which allows you to just place individual objects in here wherever you click. So this allows you to quickly place those individual objects. Um, there's an option here for path, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I want to focus on the spray function. So what the spray function does is it's actually going to spray these in here um, wherever you click. So notice how this gives you a lot of control over where these get placed right here. And notice how they're only being placed on this object, right? So if you click over here and drag, nothing's actually happening. But this gives you a lot of control over where those are placed. It'll also allow you to move these. So see how you can click and drag in order to move these around on your object, which is kind of an interesting exercise. It's kind of fun. Um, it does allow you to create some kind of like different results in here. There's an option in there for that. There's also an eraser option, which allows you to remove objects like this. So you can click and drag in order to remove those or the dilute option is going to remove some objects, but not all the objects. So if I zoom in here and I use the dilute, Notice what that's doing is that's removing some of them, um, but not all of them. You've also got options in here to randomly set your rotation and your scale. So in this case, we'll go ahead and do scale because it's a little more visible. But when you click on this, what scale is going to do is it's going to pop up this little window up here and you can set, like if you just want to set the overall scale, so if you wanted to make these all bigger, you could just set this and then click and drag and notice how those are getting bigger or you could also set randomization. And so randomization is gonna randomize the size of the objects under the brush. And you can set the factor in there for that. And so this last one is gonna allow you to click and hold, either by single clicking and holding or by holding the control key and clicking and holding in order to grow or reduce these objects. So you can use that in order to do that. And then finally, and so remember, I did skip over this path brush. So what the path brush is going to do, and I haven't been able to figure this one out yet, is it allows you to create objects that go along paths. So for example, this is a video from the guys at Scatter. What the path brush does is it allows you to create something that follows a path like this fence, and it's kind of automatically filling in the pieces. I'm not 100% sure how this one works yet, but it is probably one of the things I'm most excited about with this add-on. So I'm gonna be looking into that one a little bit further in the future, but I am really excited about what it can do. All right, so I'll link to some other scatter videos on this page, but I'm really excited about this release. Um, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.